I'm Ashton Addison from BlockWest Capital for Investment Pitch Media, and today on the Crypto Coin Show, we have Marcel Harmon, founder and CEO of Thor Wallet Dex. Marcel, welcome to the show, and thank you for taking the time. Hi, Ashton. Thank you so much for having me. Very much looking forward. Likewise, I'm excited to dive into uh, the Thor ecosystem. Um, I'd love to kick off our conversation by just hearing a little bit about yourself, you know, your experience. Uh, as an entrepreneur and in blockchain and, and what led you to starting your wallet? Yeah, sure, absolutely. So originally I have a background in finance as well as IT. Um, roughly one year after my master's degree and working for a bank, I decided that I want to start my first own company. Since then, I've been in the startup space in various different roles from founder, investor, but also uh, early member, early management member. And after discovering blockchain around 2017 through a friend, I immediately got hooked um, pretty much because it's the synergies of my two favorite topics, finance and IT. And then since the blockchain technology is so diverse and I wanted to become an expert, I decided to start a PhD in, in blockchain, crypto finance. And at the same time, I also joined the uh, Seba Bank, one of the fully licensed crypto banks uh, here in Switzerland as one of their first uh, or early employees. And yeah, but at the heart, I've always been and always will be an entrepreneur um, with the drive to, to build something new. I was always constantly on the outlook of building something new. Um, I was interested in building something that has like an immediate impact has the potential to scale globally and the technology is ready or close to being ready for, for like mass adoption. Um, there were many ideas circling around, but in the end, like Tor Wallet manifested itself as exactly what I, I wanted it to be as now the, the first non-custodial wallet um, with the integrated cross-chain DEX uh, where you can swap native tokens unwrapped and also earn yield on them if you if you pull those assets. So that's in a nutshell the the story. Incredible and yeah, I, that's a feature that even I would like to use myself. And um, and great backstory there. You know, I love finance and IT as well, and this is the perfect industry. So I'm excited to dive more into you know Thor Wallet. Um, you know, there are so many wallets that are already available, and I'm sure you're familiar with you know more than a few of them. Um, and, and obviously that function that you just mentioned there sounds like super important, but I feel like we're, even though there's so many wallets, we're so far away from mainstream ad adoption that we need it to be easier for people to get wallets and be using them for every day. Um, what else can you talk about with the distinguishment of Thor wallet as a wallet solution in, in why, um, it's prepared for, you know, mainstream adoption and heavy use? Yeah, absolutely. I think what, what really distinguishes us is that, well, first of all, we're the only native iOS and Android app uh, in, let's say, the, the Torchon ecosystem, but also um, the, the wider ecosystem or space um, that enables cross-chain DeFi. So you can swap native tokens from one chain to another, and the user does not need to care about wrapping or, or even know what it means and so on. And this is um, something very important also for, for mass adoption to, to make, make those things easy. And uh, now we will also launch our web app um, that gives customers basically a full suite of possibilities how to interact cross-chain. And yeah, I like to compare it often to the days of um, when, you, when you want to print something out. And a few years ago, when you had a Mac computer, you need to have a Mac printer. Otherwise, you simply couldn't print. And Windows, the same, you need to have a Windows printer. Nowadays, you can buy whatever printer you want. And from all the systems, including Linux, you, you can just simply, you know, print. And this is because there was some effort put in to, to make those things interoperable, make it um, mass friendly. Everyone can plug it in with a USB. And the, the same thing is, is happening in the blockchain technology and Thor for chain and for wallet, I believe being one uh, centerpiece to, to enable that. Mm -hmm. Good to know Marcel. And yeah, I feel like the amount of coins on different blockchains, 
you know, you need to have like a multi-chain wallet that can just support it all and not have to be like, this blockchain over here, this blockchain over here, I need to trade, like how do I trade across blockchains, you know, making it hard. Um, so I'm, I'm glad to hear that you've thought that through. And I really do like the functions of the DEX uh, and being able to do, you know, kind of decentralized swaps. Um, I feel like it's the future, but what we've seen from the numbers of people that are using centralized exchanges compared to DEXs, I feel like we're like not even at 1%. You know, can, can you talk about, you know, obviously there's clear advantages to using DEXs, but um, the stage that we're at right now and, and how early it is and, and why has it not been adopted sooner? Sure. Um, I mean, on the, on the positive side, on certain days, um, the volumes of the decentralized exchanges um, are on par with decentralized exchanges or even bigger. Um, they do grow faster, um, which is also nice. So it, it's the fastest growing um, industry currently, the, the DeFi sector, which is here to stay, not like just a hype. Um, and definitely more, uh, the technology just needs to evolve further. And then, um, and, and everyone is working on that cross chain, um, but also lowering the fees, uh, proof of stake, Ethereum that is coming, it, it all plays together basically. Um, and this combined with better user experience and user interfaces, making them basically as easy to use as Coinbase or decentralized versions um, is definitely key. You, you need to be able to push the technology in the background so the end user doesn't know, doesn't feel that he's actually, everything he's doing is on chain. Um, so this comes with a few challenges, um, interacting with different chains, different error messages, and it's not um, on-chain transactions are not as fast as on centralized exchanges. So if you execute a swap, for example, it doesn't appear instantly. You might need to wait a few seconds, up to a few minutes until the trade has settled, depending on which chain you used. And this needs a new thinking of how to tell the user who is unexperienced that this is totally normal because what you do is on chain. So um, those those are things I think are needed, and and then we're good to go. Just simply step by step, um, making it better with every update. We come closer to, um, yeah, making it possible to to onboard the mass to DeFi. Uh, maybe one last thing that comes to my mind is education. Mm -hmm. um, it's ed education is needed and it can be done in, in on various places within the app with learning uh, uh, just little blocks where, where they can learn um, how pooling works, what impermanent losses, etc. Um, on the website, FAQs. Um, yeah, I, I guess that's also needed to, to, to make them comfortable. Mm -hmm. Definitely a great point about the education. I feel like crypto is doing a good job uh, in trying to educate people or incentivizing them with, you know, learn to earn and giving them a little bit of tokens way more than the traditional financial industry ever did. You know, they didn't really offer anything. They try to make it like a walled garden to make it sound hard to use, you know, when really crypto is trying to make it easy for everybody. So um, I agree with you there, Marcel. And you mentioned, you know, just continually making more updates uh, on the road to more mainstream adoption. I know that Thor Wallet Dex has like an extensive roadmap um, of things that your team is working on right now. Maybe you can talk about some of the major updates that you're focused on currently and you know throughout uh, the summer of 2022 and this year. Yeah, sure, absolutely. So um, as an example, we've just launched our web app, so you can also trade in the browser. Um, we've launched with the core functionalities of swapping, but now build all the features we already have in the mobile application. Um, into the web application. So that's definitely a key focus. And um, what what is important there is the possibility to connect also your hardware wallet, your ledger. Um, so for, for bigger trades, um, you might want to use uh, one of that. So this will be possible too. Um, what is also uh, important is that our token 
our own native token, uh, TGT, Tor Wallet Governance Token. Uh, you can use it for various things to unlock premium features like multi-wallet, but also reduce your trading fees. And then, of course, governance. Um, it's currently an ERC-20 token. Uh, you need to stake it. Everything we do is DeFi. It's on-chain. So you need to stake it. Then we know that you... Um, are in a premium tier community, community plus, we call it, then those features get unlocked. Um, that's pretty pricey. It can price out some people because of the, the high fees Ethereum has. So we're um, implementing or start to work on uh, getting on a layer two solution, for example, to, to enable a better user experience that is faster and cheaper. Um, the same with... Um, we have different missions and uh, learn to earn or uh, those kind of things. You you want to have that with low fees to, to reach the masses, right? Um, so that's definitely very, very important. Um, then the switching between um, the mobile application and the web application that you really have this ecosystem feel um, and it automatically recognizes you welcome back and you you, you feel yourself at home, doesn't matter where you log in, um, but still being completely DeFi. So you, you actually do not have an account. You're as anonymous as it gets, obviously. Um, and uh, yeah, what we also announced is uh, Fiat on off Um I think it's pretty important. We, we have different tiers to a certain limit. You can It's allowed to do without AML and KYC like a daily, monthly, and year, yearly limit. Above that limit, you need to do uh, AML optionally for those who want to unwrap or off-ramp uh, more money. And uh, the long, in the long run, our vision is also to have our own uh, credit card so you can really uh, spend your assets directly from a non-custodial wallet in, in the old traditional world. Wow, a lot of updates there, Marcel. And um, <laughs> Sounds really exciting. You mentioned there the the TGT coin and you know having it currently on, on Ethereum. Um, I saw as part of the roadmap, you know, eventually not having that on Ethereum and part of this chaos net or the, the Thor chain mainnet. Can you talk about um, that and, and you know what's the timeline or what's important about that? Yes, um, after rigorous like bootstrapping and, and stress testing the transition from the torching chaos net to mainnet is imminent um, and it marks like a crucial milestone for the development of cross-chain finance um, mainnet will be handed over i would say to the community <laughs> um, with the network distributed across 100 nodes um, now anyone pretty much can empower themselves and, and experience true financial freedom through uh, Tor Wallet and, and Tor Chain, every, everyone who is connected. Um, yeah, and, and it's imminent. I would say that's the, the most important thing. Mm. Very exciting. And you know, I'm sure that will also just bring more people in, make it easier and grow you know, the DeFi ecosystem with on Tor Chain. Um, I was looking at, you know, comparing the different e ecosystems in DeFi, and I saw that, you know, the, the your guys' ecosystem has like 250 million TVL total value locked, um, but you know, DeFi is going up and down with with the market sentiment over the last few months. Um, how do you, uh, you know, move through uh, this volatility in the market and and try to continue to grow the DeFi ecosystem within Thor? Right. Um, I think ThorChain is a group of builders and also we at Thor Wallet are really just focused on, on building. The, the market around us is volatile and it's, it's nice to watch a bull market, but it doesn't matter so much. We're just focused on building something and to make it last. And even, uh, even a bear market or just on the tip of a bear market or whatever we are right now, it's not even a bad thing because you can fully concentrate on building, like put your head down and, and just keep on developing. And uh, this this is what Torchain has done the last several years. And since we entered the ecosystem, we, we basically have the same DNA regarding that. So 
um, it doesn't matter too much um, to us, like the, the total value locked. Um, of course, it's a metric that is very important and you have um, the, the better, the st more stable and the closer to the mainnet, um, the, the more people trust the system and, and lock their funds. Um, but this comes hand in hand with the continuous efforts to just build and uh, build it to last. And uh, I would say this is also the focus that we have going forward. And then the, the higher TVL is just uh, the result that will come out of this. Um, I'm quite sure of that. Yeah, I like that approach. And and I think you're right about you know just getting closer to the main net. Just build it and they will come, you know, um, if you build it properly. So you guys focus on what you do best. Um, that, that That's great. And, you know, and now Thor Wallet as a wallet, uh, I'm curious on your take on some of these major players like Robinhood, you know, creating uh, more uh, more than just a basic wallet to try and compete with Coinbase and, and other players maybe creating big wallets like that. And if you see that as a good thing or a bad thing or your opinions on, um, on that. Yeah. I think it shows that the crypto space is maturing and still growing. Um, even like if we look at the global economy and we're maybe on the brink of a global recession, but big corporates or big startups with big user bases make strategic decisions and bets on crypto, which is mm -hmm. overall just a very good sign um, because those are bets and, and decisions you discuss with the board. It's a long decision process. It takes a lot of funds to to build it and to roll out your plan. It's it's not just something you 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 brainstorm in an hour and then you make the decision. So overall this is just a very positive sign. Um, I'm I'm not shy away of the competition. It's good and um, it will further increase the adoption basically and that's all we want. Um, same with, with education, competitors. Um, since the market is growing um, and we're still so early, uh, there is a lot of I would say space for for competition and uh, of course eventually there will be a period of consolidation again but that's uh, totally fine overall I, I think it's very positive and i'm looking forward to it definitely yeah and you're right about this isn't a one hour decision you know a lot of these large companies they have a very long term uh, vision and if they are adding crypto that means that they believe it's going to be here for the long run um, and, and they're planning for that. So it, it does bring a lot of promise. And you're right, I don't think it's to be looked at as competition because everything helps uh, bring people into Web3 in the future of finance. Um, I'm curious on your uh, visions, Marcel, for you know the, the long-term vision of DeFi and, and multi-chain and, and how it will all work when you know, TradFi and the mainstream is all involved. Right. I think... My, my vision slash also my hope, but I think we'll get there, is that we, we can have an app um, as user-friendly and easy to use as the current uh, CFI apps or TradeFi apps. Um, you use them, you can simply download them with, um, in the store with a mobile phone. You, you do not need to register an account. You do not need to give your email address, whatever. <clears throat> it's completely um, trustless, open, uh, I mean, permissionless. Um, everyone can use it um, and, and transparent. And the user does not need to know and doesn't know how everything in the back works. Right now I'm using a Macintosh here, a Mac laptop and... Um, I even though I studied IT, I don't know to every detail how everything works, and this is also actually fine. Now we're using Zoom, um, and the same is there. So, pretty much have just this new decentralized financial system that is built on the characteristics of blockchain, which again is open, transparent, uh, permissionless. Um, and it can evolve next to the traditional financial system and eventually 
users can choose what they want to use and uh, that the technology simply um, goes into the background and it, it just flawlessly works and, and also DeFi um, meaning any token to any token uh, unwrapped I'm personally not the biggest fan of bridges um, but simply being able to try one token from one ecosystem to another token that maybe is on another ecosystem and he again he does not need to understand how those tokens are transferred but they, it just simply always works it works fast reliable and uh, he has all the freedom to to choose uh, the service and if he doesn't like this service because it's DeFi, he can simply get his seed phrase and get to another provider and try that one right uh, so complete freedom to choose who you want to work with who you trust so yeah that's that's pretty much my vision yeah i like that vision marcel and yeah i um, i know uh freedom of choice is obviously a, a great part of that and i believe you know that's part of decentralized finance as the future i'm looking forward to to getting to that point and thankful that uh, your team at thor wallet dex is, is a part of that vision and working to make it a reality so um, for the people that are looking to you know start using thor wallet dex and, and learn more about you know this future DeFi vision that you have what is the best way to uh, get started with using that and to join in the thor wallet dex community sure the, the simplest way is actually um to either go on our website thorwallet.org or just go to your iOS or Google Play Store and download the app and give it a try. Have a look. If you like it, stick around. If not, uh, go go to another uh, wallet. That's fine too. Um, obviously, we hope that you like it. Um, we we also have a Discord server, Telegram. We're active on Twitter, um, all over the place, pretty much. Um, I'm sure if you're interested. Um, uh, we're always happy for feedback. We're always uh, listen to our community. Um, also, the premium features we develop um, are basically derived on the feedback we get. So if we think something is missing or something we should improve, um, we will listen um, and, and we're happy to, to work on that. Great. Thanks, Marcel. I will leave those links as well for the viewers in the description box below to make it easy for them. Uh, all the best on all the updates you mentioned and, and moving towards the mainnet and let's follow up in the near future. Awesome. Thank you so much.